We've been to all four corners of Britain in our quest to interview the great and good of entertainment. Comics, actors, writers, politicians, singers, dancers and choreographers. It doesn't matter who they are. They've all given me their own take on the world they live in and have, in their own way, helped to define what makes Britain great. So join me and my assistants as we get another insight into the marvellous and enigmatic world of showbiz here on Beyond the Title. Making his comedy debut in 2012 following correcting Ross Noble for his inaccurate impression of Stephen Hawking, comedian Lee Ridley promptly purchased an iPad voice synthesizer and set about conquering the circuit. In 2014, Ridley won the BBC Radio New Comedy Awards before embarking on a new show entitled Disability for Dunces as part of the Edinburgh Fringe. Just three years later, Ridley received national acclaim when he won the 2018 series of Britain's Got Talent, winning a spot on last year's Royal Variety performance. I caught up with the writer and comedian on set of the most southerly leg of his new nationwide tour to talk parking spaces, reality television and his hopes for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lee Ridley, a.k.a. Lost Voice Guy. So this must be a world first. A podcast interview with two people who can't speak. Firstly, you purchased the iPad voice synthesis in 2014 when you got into comedy. What did you use to communicate before this? I think I got my first communication aid when I was about eight. Before that, I just used sign language. Obviously, this was a very limited way of communicating, though. I think my first communication aid was called a touch talker, and it was pretty massive. I also remember being reluctant to use it. I can't quite remember why. All I can remember is having to carry this suitcase around with me, and then having to try to use it as well. I appreciated my speech therapist in the end. I think I only saw the benefits when I finally had a reason to use it. Such as in social situations when I couldn't just rely on sign language. Thankfully, technology has moved on since then. Now, I use an iPad for day-to-day communication. It's a brilliant device and it's made me so much more independent. The voices have got better as well. (laughs) I dread to think what the voice on the touch talker was like. If I'm honest, I didn't really like this voice at first. I think I'm getting more used to it now, though. That's very similar to uh, the the devices that you would used to use, wouldn't it? Yeah. You had a light right, sir. So time consuming. <laughs> When you programmed in what you wanted to say, people had stopped listening. Uh, In 2014, you won the BBC New Comedy Award. What sort of platform did this give you in helping move your career on? I think winning the BBC New Comedy Award was the moment when I realised that I could actually be a comedian full-time and make a living out of it. Back then, I still had a day job as well, so my comedy was just something that I did on evenings and weekends. But after winning the award, it gave me the confidence to quit the day job and start doing comedy full time. And obviously, winning the award raised my profile quite a lot. So that meant I had a big advantage going into my new career. And during the same year, you embarked on your new Edinburgh show, Disability for Dunces. 
How pivotal, uh, how pivotal is the Edinburgh Fringe to new comics today? I think that the Edinburgh Fringe Festival is very important for most comedians. I definitely learned a lot from going up there with a new show every year. It's made me into a better writer and a better storyteller as well. I think the thing I like most about the festival is the bus around the city when it's on. Everyone seems to be in such a good mood and smiling, and I think that's something that's been missing in society in general for a while now. So it's nice that we can all have a good time for a month of a year. People are always coming up to me at the festival, asking for selfies and congratulating me. So that's really nice as well. It's a fun place to be during August. Francesca Martinez and Lawrence Clark remain the contemporary pioneers of disabled people in comedy. How important are these figures in raising awareness that spastics can be funny? There's quite a lot of really good disabled comedians on the comedy circuit at the moment, and I think that's really important. And that's why I would like to see more disabled comedians booked by comedy clubs appearing at festivals and being shown on television. Basically, more disabled people being portrayed in a positive light. The general public need to see that disabled people can contribute an awful lot to society, and they need to see that we have a sense of humor just like anyone else. Programs like The Last Leg on Channel 4 have paved the way, but there's still a lot that could be done. Only when we see disabled people on our stages and on our screens as much as anyone else will attitudes really change. How important is it for comedians like you to make light of diversity in the 21st century? I think it's very important that we can have a laugh about stuff like this. And I think it's also important that other people see that it's okay to joke about subjects that they may find awkward to talk about. Because I think comedy can get people talking about this kind of thing. I think joking about my condition helps me cope a lot. I've always seen the funny side of my disability and I think that's been very important to me. If I didn't laugh about it, I'd most certainly cry. I also think I joke about my disability as a defense mechanism. As long as I'm laughing at myself, it means that no one else can laugh at me first. In that way, I think that comedy is a very powerful tool. In 2018, you auditioned for the heavyweight Britain's Got Talent. What were your initial thoughts when applying? I'll be honest, it wasn't an easy decision to make. Before I went on it, I think talent shows were looked down upon by many comedians. And I was one of them. I just didn't see it as something that I wanted to do, and I didn't particularly think it helped my career that much. I also worried about becoming known as that guy that won Britain's Got Talent and only having 15 minutes of fame. A few things helped me change my mind. One of the main reasons that I decided to do it was the fact that there isn't really many opportunities for comedians to reach a large audience on television anymore. There's only really programs like the Apollo left, and even then, it's hard to get a break on anything like that. It was actually my agent who suggested that Britain's Got Talent would be a good way of reaching a much bigger audience. I still took a while to be convinced, but in the end I knew that he was right. I think Britain's Got Talent gets about 10 million viewers, so I would have been silly just to dismiss it. Even after agreeing to do it, I didn't tell many of my friends on the circuit, because I was worried about being judged, or as being viewed as selling my soul to Simon Cowell. 
It was only after my audition was shown on the television that I realized I should have trusted my comedy mates more. They were all so supportive of me when they saw it, and it meant a lot to me. I actually think that having their support helped me go on to win the whole thing. Already being established within the industry, what sort of stigma is attached to reality television among the comedy establishment? I definitely think attitudes about reality television are changing in the comedy industry. And I think that's down to how successful several comedians have become from doing shows like Britain's Got Talent. I don't think that people look down on it as much as they once did. People now see it as just another way to get exposure. And I think that's a good thing, because there's loads of comedians on the circuit who deserve a lot more recognition. Did you ever think you'd win? The main reason I decided to audition for Britain's Got Talent was obviously to meet Ant and Deck, but I also did it because I thought it would help me develop as a performer. A lot of my comedy idols have stepped out onto that stage at the Hammersmith Apollo, so I thought it would be nice to follow in their footsteps. Of course, I never expected to win it. In fact, I had to cancel my summer holiday because it clashed with the final. It was definitely worth it though. It was a dream come true. What sort of accolade was it to perform at the Royal Variety 2018? It was such a great honour to perform at the Royal Variety, and it's something that I was very proud to do. Of course, I was nervous beforehand. I think anyone would be nervous performing for royalty. The rest of the line-up was really good as well, so I had a lot to live up to. I'm just glad that I didn't press the wrong button and swear in front of Harry and Meghan. Now, looking back at your career, what's your, what's your proudest achievement so far? I supported Ross Noble at his show in Newcastle a few years ago. That was a pretty special moment. I'm a big fan of Ross Noble, and I have been for about 20 years. So it's still a bit bizarre that we're actually friends now. So that was probably one of the best things to ever happen to me. So hopefully we can get to work together again soon. And uh, finally, what's next for Lee Ridley? I've got an exciting time ahead of me. Winning the show has changed my life in so many ways. I'm busier than I ever was before. As a comedian, I'm on a nationwide tour and have also written a book called I'm Only In It For The Parking. During my Britain's Got Talent experience, the general public was so supportive of me. And everyone has been really lovely since, so it's going to be nice to give something back to them. I'm excited to meet everyone and I hope they enjoy the tour show. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you to our guest for being the subject of another Beyond the Title interview. If you liked this, why not browse the website and see if there's anything else that takes your fancy. Don't forget to like our Facebook page to receive updates on forthcoming interviews and to see more information about me and what I do. Thanks again and hopefully see you next time.